Hey, what's up guys? Joel Adams with Iridesium and I am back with another pretty cool tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at something that I use quite often, destruction using particles. It's a pretty simple effect and I am going to show you basically how to do it using a building here. Now a couple things to keep in mind, the more detailed your model is that you're breaking apart, the better it's going to look. If you're going to destroy a car, try to get a car model that has all the internals modeled. That way it'll look really cool and detailed, just like a lot of stuff blowing everywhere. Anyways, with that out of the way, let's jump right into this tutorial and see what we can do. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is add in a plane. Basically what we're going to be doing is using particles to slowly destroy an object as another object hits it. So we're going to add a plane and we are going to animate our destruction object, our collision object. So let's make a UFO, scale this in, move it up a non-classic UFO. This will be a donut. Add modifier, mirror, and we're going to mirror this on the z-axis. And move this down. Apply that. So now let's go and add a rigid body, active, and this plane is going to be rigid body, passive. So we're going to use rigid body physics to animate this. All right, so move this off to the side, and what we want to do is just give it a little bit of initial velocity. So if I go and just animate that over just a little bit, that should be enough. So if you choose animated, then you can actually preview that. And then I want to actually animate the animated checkbox. So go to, I don't know, about frame five, hit I, and then go to frame six and uncheck it and hit I again. And that's going to give it a little bit of initial velocity. As you can see, it's only a very little bit. Let's move that forward again. There we go. So that's more like it. Now we can add a little bit of rotation. I rotation. And rotate that just a little. There we go, so that's a lot better. Go under field weights and turn gravity down to like half. Yeah, that's better. And then let's go to our plane, turn the friction all the way up. And that way the friction is controlled on the donut shape here. If you want to, you can go into edit mode, subdivide the heck out of this plane, and add a displacement modifier. See what that does. Apply this. Then you could use mesh. And I'll scale this down to maybe 0.3. So that's not bad. Refine your animation until you get exactly what you want. And then go over to this tab, go to cache, and bake it. Once it's completely baked, while I'm selected on this ring, I'm going to go to object and rigid body and bake to keyframes. This plane is still a rigid body, but if I delete it and add in a new plane, scale that to eight, you can see that this is still working. So let's go to the front view and when it stops, you can see it stops and there's still a bunch of keyframes. And if you zoom in, it's just sort of jittering back and forth. So let's just go and delete all of those. So when it comes to a stop, just stops and it's frozen. So now we can set this to be collision, turn the damping and the friction up, set this plane to be collision, turn the damping and the friction up on that, and then we can append in some object that we want to destroy. All right, so we've got this and that looks decent. I'm going to scale it down so that this uh, circle is capable of doing some serious damage. Move it over here. You know what we can also do is we can take our circle, go back to frame one, select all the keyframes, and scale it to two. That will slow the animation down and just make everything look uh, a little bigger. The bigger it is, the slower you'll need to go. We'll just move the building so that it's kind of kind of cuts the building in half. So that's not perfect, and you want to work on the animation of this object, the object that's going to be causing the destruction until it's perfect. I'm going to leave it as it is. It seems okay to me. 
let's go ahead and start some destruction. So tab into edit mode on your building and look at the geometry. Here's the the inside of the building if I hide the outside. It looks okay but you want the geometry to be as even as possible. So let's um well you don't necessarily want it to be even you just want to make sure that there's definitely enough of it. So let's select everything except for maybe this and these. Subdivide it one more time. Yeah, that's not looking too bad. Now you can go Control T. Uh, well, select everything and go Control T. Convert it all to triangles. That way the geometry really is uh, messy. All right, so the next thing we need to do is go in and select all the parts of the mesh that actually get hit with our UFO. So I'm going to go into edit mode, hit Alt H, make sure everything is unhidden, and then just go through one set of frames at a time, uh, removing stuff. So go into wireframe, hit C, and select that, because that's what the UFO is touching. Play a little bit ahead, get the next set, and do that again. Do that over and over again. I'm going to go ahead and speed through this next part. So now that you've got that, control minus. You want it to be smaller rather than bigger. Uh, that's what she said anyways. P selection and you've got this chunk. If you remove it, you can see you've got a missing building and it actually looks very cool. The more detailed the model, the better this is going to look. This would be a good time to save. Give your project a good name and uh, we can keep working on it. The next part is to actually start destroying this carefully go through and destroy each part one at a time. Select that, go back a couple of frames, object, quick effects, quick explode, right before it hits it, and I'll change that to maybe 600. I usually use disk cache because uh, your file can get pretty big if you don't. Set this to 250. Field weights, I tend to set gravity down to 0.5, maybe less. I turn off normal velocity. Randomize can sometimes be good, can sometimes make a mess. Check rotation, normal, and dynamic. And you get that. Let's try 0.2. That's better. And then let's go into physics and turn drag and damping just, just barely up. Okay, that's too high. Now, just do the next part. So go to this destruction object here, select the next little bit, and uh, P, selection. I'm gonna go back a couple of frames, object, quick effects, quick explode. Point two, and turn damping just barely on. Velocity can be zero. Now that you've separated this, you can actually subdivide it even more if you want. Bake it. And that's not half bad. And then I'm going to speed through and do all the rest of this until it looks finished and complete. Alright, so I just got all the baking done, and if you play that back, you'll see what the animation looks like. Now, you'll notice that we are left with a building that is floating, and then some pieces in here that are floating as well. Now, usually what I end up doing is animating them by hand. However, I have nothing against attaching them to a base mesh and using rigid bodies to animate them, which uh, could work. I'm just going to animate them by hand again at the moment, so I'm going to select this one, go Object, Set Origin, and Origin to Geometry, just so it's a bit easier, and then I'm going to go through the animation, and basically as soon as it breaks this bottom part, I'm going to go I, Location, go to the side view, and just uh, at the same speed as the particles are kind of dropping, I'm just going to rotate it, well, Let's go back here first and add a rotation keyframe. And go to here, rotate it, and then just drop it down to the ground. 
Then the same thing for this, it breaks there at impact. I'm gonna go I location, rotation, and just give it a little bit of a jolt as though it takes a hit, pauses a second, and then it just sort of slowly sinks down to the bottom with uh, DiCaprio, something like that. And you can see that the circle goes through it a little bit there, but I think that's fine. I'm gonna add in a camera and put the camera maybe right here. And I'll just have it looking at the building. Uh, so if we go to cycles, render this, I'm going to use an, I'll just use the sky texture, which is fine. Let's go to the UFO. I'm gonna give it a metal texture, something like this, maybe make it real dark. And then the ground, I'll just give um, concrete. Turn your particles back on. I will zoom the camera in just a little bit. Choose motion blur and render this. One thing that I recommend doing is adding a second set of particle systems that uh, really don't have anything to do with the model itself. They just sort of emit on impact. Make them real small. It's just gonna be like dust and a lot of little debris. It'll add more detail to the final result. Then of course, there's always smoke simulations. The more effects that you pile on top of each other, the better the destruction is going to look. Remember that imperfection is the digital perfection. That really is a pretty brilliant statement. One other thing to keep in mind is that these particles work really well in the air, but as soon as they hit the ground, they end up looking kind of ridiculous because they're just sort of sticking into the ground. They don't really collide with the ground properly. One thing that you can do to fix that is add a solidify modifier to the particle system so that everything has a little more weight. The best way to get around that is to just not show the ground, unfortunately. Anyways, that is basically it. You can destroy almost anything with this effect. If you wanted to destroy wood, just make sure that the geometry is really stretched out so that it ends up looking like splinters. If you are interested, I would absolutely love to see whatever renders you create. You can join the Iridescent community with the link I have in the description and post whatever you have there. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time. This is Iridescent.